Namaste. Welcome to Flow and Restore Yoga with ending in 10 minutes of guided meditation. Welcome to the practice. My name is Michelle Chua. And for today, you'll want to have quite a few props, like two blocks, a strap, a bolster, and a blanket. And if you have additional ones, feel free to bring them around and just have more options for the postures. Um, find a way to sit comfortably for you. You might sit in hero's pose. You might sit on your pillow, a way that allows you to feel some sense of grounding and even distribution of your weight throughout the bottom of your body, as well as upliftedness. So your spine feels tall, the breath can flow easily while your whole body is relaxed. And take a moment, especially if you've been going from one thing to another, uh, to just settle into the space by visually orienting yourself, which is a way to calm your, your nervous system. And that's looking around your own space and taking in what appeals to your eyes, like colors and textures, shapes and forms. So today I'd like to revisit a topic that we've explored way, way in the past. And it's what positive psychologist Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi calls the flow state. So you might have experienced the flow state in when you're immersed in an activity that is both fun and challenging for you where you experience these following qualities. One, you're fully engaged. Two, it seems like time flies. Um, three, each action or thought or whatever you're doing flows into the next almost naturally or organically, where it doesn't require much planning or overthinking. You feel skillful, even though the action that you're in might be challenging you, you feel like you have the tools to confront that challenge. And the ego falls away. And what I gather from his saying that is that that critical mind, that self critic that might say things like, oh, this painting is not good enough, or has us comparing ourselves to others unnecessarily all that stuff quiets down and we're able to feel a sense of confidence to take risks that might be rewarding does any of this sound familiar to you i was um teaching the uh, middle school high school students this week about flow state and we're exploring different things and some of them mentioned about activities like being immersed in basketball a lot of sports activities or drawing creating art, playing an instrument. We were just fully immersed. And this is practically the feeling of being in meditation. You might remember that the eight limbs of yoga, the eight practices of yoga include the sixth limb, dharana, which is concentration, where we bring intention into steadying our minds onto one focal point, and the next stage, the seventh limb, is dhyana, meditation, where that effort becomes almost relaxed, uh, or it is relaxed, that it feels almost effortless, that we become fully absorbed in whatever we're concentrating on. And so that's so similar to the flow state. Today, I invite you in our physical yoga practice, whether it be the vinyasa flow half of moving to the breath, or in the yin and restorative half in being more still and practicing surrendering effort where you might touch upon those qualities I mentioned that describe flow state and then we'll practice it in meditation as well. So let's begin the asana practice by checking in let your body be still maybe close your eyes and begin to mentally scan your physical body to notice any sensations you're experiencing. Let go of any need to judge anything you observe as good or bad or right or wrong. We're simply opening our awareness to what's here.
Feel your breath just as it is. Sense its qualities such as pace, depth, anything you can feel about it. And through the breath, observe your energy. Now, what if feels alive in your heart right now? Are there any emotions asking you to hold space for them? And sometimes there might be a mix of emotions where we feel what seems contradictory, like relaxed and anxious. Let it all be valid. Bring awareness to your mind. How does your mind feel right now? Let the breath in a little deeper through your nose. Exhaling a little slower through the mouth. Again, inhale a little slower. Exhaling completely. As you continue to deepen your breath, I invite you to recognize anything in this moment that you appreciate. Through gratitude awakening the energy of your heart to then now set your intention for your practice. What qualities are you inviting into your experience or strengthening about yourself? Or is there any something specific in any area of your life in which you're creating a shift in? And then I invite you to choose someone to offer up this practice to a way of dedicating your efforts to the benefits of someone else as well. setting our intentions and dedications while creating a resonant space to share practice in. Let's join our voices in chanting OM three times. As we continue to lengthen the breath, let's begin a breathing technique called Ujjayi Pranayama, which means victorious breathing. It's a way to invite calm, balance, and focus to our mind bodies. So closing your lips, gently narrow the back of your throat and listen for a sound that you're intentionally creating that sounds like a gentle whisper. As you slow the breath down, balancing the length of in breath with the length of out breath. Take your time to reach the fullness of the inhalation and to feel emptiness of the exhalation. And see if you can keep this rhythm as consistent as possible, using the sound as a way to align your attention in your body in the present moment. We're going to move to this rhythm. 
So let's make our way down into child's pose to begin. Bring the inner edges of your feet together to touch and have your knees together or apart. Sink your pelvis down to your heels and let's extend the arms forward. So this is extended child's pose where you're actively reaching towards the front of your mat while pulling your hips back and down. Now, as you let your forehead rest on the ground or on a prop, draw your shoulder blades back and let's broaden across the shoulder blades. So keeping the palms face down from your shoulder socket, spin the outer sides of your upper arms, which are your triceps towards the ground where you can feel your shoulder blades protract. They spread apart and rise out to the sides. Now at the same time, depress the shoulder blades, which means glide them down the back, creating more space in the neck. Tune into a couple more deep breaths here in Balasana. Now we're going to move through a longer range of motion than our usual cat cow. So separate your feet hips distance so that your shins are parallel to each other. Plant the palms flat on the floor. And from child's pose on your next slow inhalation, glide forward, coming onto all fours and coil your chest up, look up, entering cow pose. And as you exhale, contracting your belly, drop your head and draw your hips back to your heels in child's pose. Let's keep going a couple more times. Inhale, come forward, roll the shoulders back, tilt your heart and gaze up. Exhale, lift the belly towards the back, doming your spine, then sink your hips into child's pose. Once more, listen to your breath. Now from child's pose, we're gonna change it up. A longer range of motion, slower breath. As you inhale, come forward again into cow pose. Roll the shoulders back, look up, tuck your toes this time. And as you breathe out, engage your abdomen, then lift your hips, press your thighs back, entering downward facing dog. Let's try that twice more. Inhale, lower the knees to the floor, roll the shoulders back, cow pose. Exhale, engage your abdomen, lift the hips, press the thighs back, downward facing dog. Take one more cycle at your slow pace of breath. From downward facing dog, separate the feet hips width apart, parallel to each other, and spread your thumbs flat towards each other as the index fingers stretch forward or slightly turn out. Once again, wrap your triceps towards the floor, spread the shoulder blades apart, and draw the shoulder blades onto your back ribs as you relax your neck. Inhale, raise your right leg behind you. Keep your hips even if you can. And as you exhale, bend your right knee high towards your nose, contract the belly, round forward and come into plank pose. Then as quietly as you can, step the foot beside your right thumb and lower your left knee to the ground. Keep the left toes tucked and come high onto your fingertips. Optional to place a block under each hand at the height that you need so that your shoulders can relax. You can look up and lift the chest. Inhale here in your kneeling lunge, let the pelvis sink. Now, as you exhale, lift the left knee and start to straighten the legs to your degree, bowing forward in a wide pyramid pose. Tack the right hip back. Let's try two more rounds of that. Inhale, kneeling lunge. Look up. Exhale, wide pyramid pose. Bow in. Last one. Listen to your breath. Now come into a high lunge and spin the left heel to the ground. Slide the right foot to the left until the heel aligns with the arch of your left foot. Warrior two, press to your feet and inhale, cartwheel your arms apart. Now as you bend your right knee directly over the ankle, wrap your right sitting bone underneath you and firm the top of your left thigh bone back. Let your shoulders relax right above your hips with a long spacious spine. Gaze just beyond your right fingertips for three more breaths. 
Virabhadrasana too. As you root down through both feet, inhale, straighten the right leg, raise your arms overhead so the palms might touch. Exhale, return to warrior two, bending the right knee, open the arms twice more. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, warrior two, track the front knee in line with the middle toe. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, warrior two. Now from the right shoulder, flip the right palm to face up, Side bend towards your rear wall, inhale here, then exhale, cartwheel your hands to the floor. Step back to plank pose, top of a push-up. Let's pause for three breaths. Choose to either straighten your legs, actively pressing the inner heels back, or lower your knees right under your hips. Stack your shoulders above your wrists and engage the sides of the belly. Gaze on the ground ahead of the thumbs, deep breath in. Now as you exhale first, lower your knees, then lower your chest, sticking the tailbone up, look forward and lower your chin. This is called Ashtangasana. As you inhale, slither forward onto your belly and roll the shoulders back into a baby cobra pose. Root down to the tops of your feet. Exhale, tuck your toes, press up and lift your hips back. Downward facing dog. Tune into one slow breath. Keep your hips leveled in height. Inhale, raise the left leg back. Exhale, bend the left knee high towards your nose, round the back, shift forward. As quietly as you can, step the foot beside your left thumb and lower your right knee into a kneeling lunge. Keep the right toes tucked. Come up high on your fingertips. Maybe place your hands in blocks. And inhale, gaze up. Keep the feet where they are. Exhale, lift the right knee. Draw the left hip back towards straightening the front leg and bow as if you have a flat back, wide pyramid pose. Twice more, inhale, kneeling lunge. Exhale, wide pyramid pose. Inhale, kneeling lunge. Exhale, wide pyramid pose. This time, bend the left knee into a high lunge and spin your right heel to the floor. Slide the left foot to the right until that heel aligns with the arch of your right foot. Then inhale, cartwheel your arms to rise into warrior two. Bending your left knee just over the heel, wrap your left sitting bone under your body and firm the top of your right thigh bone back. Shoulders relaxed right over the hips, lift through the back of your skull and steady your gaze just past your left hand. Let's listen to three more breaths here in Virabhadrasana two. Inhale, straighten the left leg, raise your arms overhead. Exhale, bend the left knee, return to warrior two. Twice more, inhale, rise up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, rise. Exhale, Virabhadrasana two. Now let's keep the left knee bent from the left shoulder, flip the left palm to face up. Inhale, side bend towards your rear wall, peaceful warrior. Exhale, cartwheel your hands to the ground, step into your version of plank pose and pause again for three breaths. Lift the sides of the belly, lengthen the top of your head forward, wrap the triceps towards the rear wall. And this time, as you exhale, glide forward, keep the belly lifted, the neck long, bend your elbows to touch your side ribs, lower halfway in Chaturanga Randasana. Either lower all the way for Cobra or flip the toes from here and draw the shoulders back to upward facing dog. Exhale, contract your abdomen and lift your tailbone high. Draw your hips back, entering Adho Mukha Svanasana. Tune into a full cycle of breath as you steady your gaze on one spot. When you've emptied the breath, walk or lightly jump to the top of your mat into a forward fold. Press your hands on blocks, your shins, or the ground. Inhale, lift your chest forward, glide your shoulders back. Half forward fold. Exhale, bow in. 
Press to your feet, inhale, rise all the way up. Raising the arms overhead, gently coil your chest up. Exhale, trace your palms in prayer from your crown to your heart center, mountain pose. Realign your mind to your intention for your practice. Tuning into your breath, let's flow through one sun salutation A. Feeling that state of flow of being fully present as you listen to your breath. Inhale, sweep your arms forward and gently coil your chest up. Exhale, hinge forward from your hips. Feel free to bend the knees. Try to create a flat back as you're bowing. Press your fingertips on shins, block to the floor, lengthen as you inhale forward. Step into your version of plank and exhale, lower knees, chest, chin, or come forward and hug the elbows to the ribs, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing duck. Exhale, downward facing duck. This time, let the body be still as you steady your gaze for three slow breaths. Now, keeping your hips leveled, inhale, raise your right leg back. Exhale, cross the knee to tap your left elbow or somewhere around there. Keep the shoulders balanced in height as you come forward. Gently step right foot beside right thumb. Inhale, rise to crescent lunge. So you're high on the ball of the left foot. The feet are hips width apart, parallel to each other. Draw your tailbone down. Square both hips to evenly face forward and slightly lift your frontal hip bones as you lengthen your spine. Let your gaze steady on one spot. And let's prepare for a spinal twist. Using your right thumb, hook the outer crease of your right hip and draw the right hip down as you press your inner left heel towards the rear wall and inhale to lengthen your spine forward. Keep your hips leveled and exhale, turn your chest to the right. Option to lower left hand inside of the front leg on a block of the floor and raise the right arm or to go further and hook your left elbow outside of your right thigh where you could join your hands in prayer, open the arms apart or bind. Now draw your right hip downward and lift the left thigh. Try to keep the hips leveled so you're not twisting at the pelvis. You're stabilizing the lower back by twisting at the waist. Land your eyes on one focal point. Let the shoulders relax away from the neck as you broaden your chest. Tune into three last breaths in this version of Parita Parjvakanasana, twisting side angle pose. Lower your hands to the ground. Take a vinyasa or a round of cat-cow. Let's meet in downward facing dock. From downward facing dock, keep your hips leveled. Inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Keep your shoulders leveled. As you exhale, cross the knee to tap right elbow, twisting at your waist and plank. Step the foot beside left thumb. Stay on the ball of the right foot and inhale, rise up to crescent lunge. Separating your feet as wide apart as your hips, lift the right heel high. Turn both hips to face forward and find a stable center, literally the center of your body under your belly button. Slightly lift your frontal hip bones and direct your tailbone down while you lift up to the top of your head. Centering on the sound of your breath. Let's prepare to twist. Use your left hand to cup the top of your left thigh as you inhale, lengthen your spine forward. Across your waistline, exhale, twist to the left, entering the same version of possible as you did on the first side. Right hand down inside of the leg on a block of the floor, left arm up, or right elbow hooking outside left thigh, hands in prayer, arms apart, or bind. With each in breath, lengthen through the entire center line of your body. Hug your outer hips towards your midline to stabilize your hips as you rotate the rib cage on an exhale. Shoulder blades down the back, steady gaze, three more breaths. Parita, 
Parshvakanasana. On an exhale, lower your hands, take your vinyasa or cat cow. We'll meet in child's pose this time. Once again, in child's pose, I invite you to extend your arms forward, sink your hips towards your heels, rest your forehead down. Notice the quality of your breathing in this moment. As you stay aware of that, begin to walk your hands to the right, maybe reaching outside of your mat if possible. You might even explore the side bend by stepping the left hand on top of the right and visualizing breathing deeper along the left wall of your rib cage and the left side of your lower back. Now entering the yin portion of our flow and restore practice. See if you can lengthen the next exhalation even longer than the inhalation. And when it's done, begin to walk your hands over to the left side. Maybe you step the right hand on top of the left. Focus on breathing deeper along the right side of your torso. I invite you to play with lengthening the out-breath slightly longer than the in-breaths. For example, breathing in for a count of five, breathing out for a count of seven. This is a way to invite even more relaxation to your nervous system. As you extend your arms through center again, Allow a deep breath, lengthening up and down your spine. And then come forward onto all fours, tabletop. Inhale, raise your right leg behind you. And this time as you exhale, step the right foot on the right side of your right hand, entering lizard lunge. So we had a request to help release tension along the IT band, which is this region from your outer knee to your outer hip. So let's get into that a bit. Feel free to place your hands on props, such as a couple of blocks. If that's helpful for you to be able to relax your shoulders and breathe more comfortably. Now make sure that you're not over bending your front knee where it comes in front of the ankle. It's just above the ankle. Now, to get a little deeper into the IT band region, flex your right foot, spread the toes up towards the right shin, keep that flex because that stabilizes your knee while you splay your right thigh open. Now, as you drop your weight onto the outer foot, make sure you're not collapsing or rolling over onto the outer ankle. Keeping the foot flexed, Gently draw your right hip back and extend your chest forward. Now, some of you might find it comfortable to come down into your forearms, whether you use blocks or lower onto the floor. Other options, if it's available in your body right now, you could bend the left knee and backstroke your right arm. Take hold of the left foot with your right hand and gently bring the heel towards your glute, which also adds a stretch into your left quadricep, the front muscle of the thigh. If that's not reachable, don't worry about it. Focus on what is possible here for you as you center on 10 more slow breaths. Let your shoulders relax away from your ears.
As you're ready to begin to place your hands on the ground in front of you. Now step your right foot on the inner side of your right hand. So you're in a hips distance apart in your kneeling lunge. You may want to have blocks under each hand here and have your hands back towards your outer hips. Let's come into half or moving towards full Hanumanasana, which is split. So lift the ball of your right foot, flex it again, and draw your right thigh bone back so it goes deeper into the hip socket while you extend your chest forward. So your hips stay evenly facing forward. Here, try to keep a little lift in the chest, your throat open, the shoulders are relaxed away from the neck. We're not trying to overdo it by rounding the back like this. So keep the length of your spine and bow in, or if your right hamstring feels pretty open, you could start to slide the right heel forward little by little. Keep the left toes tucked to prevent turning out the right leg or the left leg, and continue to roll the left outer hip forward. Tack the right hip back so you're squaring the hips. One option is to place a block right under the right hamstring so that your hands are free to help square your hips manually like this. Another option is if your pelvis meets the ground, you can start to fold in here. So just see what's available, I'm not trying to force anything, really tune into the sensations of your body. There may be some discomfort as things are opening up, but we're not looking for pain. So wherever you are, tune into 10 more deep breaths. Now really take your time exiting this pose back to hands and knees. Bring the hands close enough to you. Drag the right heel very slowly towards you. And then step the right foot back. Come down to hands and knees. And just pause there for a few breaths. Let your body unwind from that series of postures as you observe your body. When you feel ready, inhale, raise your left leg behind you. And exhale, gently step the foot on the left side of your left hand. Setting up for lizard lunge. Uh, here, again, make sure that your front knee is not over bending in front of the ankle, but it's just above the heel. Flex your left foot by curling the toes up towards the shin while you splay your left thigh open just enough so you're leaning on the knife outer edge of the foot, not rolling over onto the ankle. Gently draw your left outer hip back as you extend your chest forward and notice if props are useful to place your hands on or if you want to come down lower onto your forearms. Taking the transitions breath by breath so you can really be observant of how your body is communicating its needs to you. If it's available on this side, you might bend the right knee as well and backstroke your left arm to catch hold of the foot and slowly bring it towards you as you're stretching the right quadricep. Draw both of your shoulder blades down your back ribs away from the neck and let's Feel 10 more cycles of breath.
When you're ready, slowly come into a kneeling lunge where your legs are hips distance apart. So bring the left foot to the left, uh, right side of your left hand, to the inner side. And then from here, let's set up for half or towards full split Hanumanasana. So again, you might want to have a block under each hand. I highly recommend it. it. gives you more options. And bring the hands close enough to you where they're not way in forward. So you have more control of your balance. And then from here, lift the ball of your left foot flexed. Plug your left thigh bone back deeper into the hip socket towards straightening the leg while you reach your chest forward, elongating your spine with a slight lift in the chest. Lengthening your neck and all sides as you glide the shoulders back, slightly engage the abdomen here. And then you might little by little hinge forward just to your capacity where you're not rounding the back or closing off the breath. Or if it's available, your left hamstring feels open, tuck the right toes to help keep the hips squared while you slowly slide the left heel forward, tacking the left hip back. You might use a block as support under your left hamstring where your hands can be free to hold your hips squared if you lower your pelvis to the ground you might begin to hinge forward from there so whatever your capacity and honoring where your body is at in this moment let the breath nurture that space for opening and releasing tuning into 10 cycles Take your time coming back to hands and knees, tabletop, support of the hands walking towards you. Slowly glide your left heel towards you. The transitions are so important to keeping our bodies safe in and out of the postures. And as you come back to hands and knees, be still for a few breaths and just notice what you're experiencing in your body. From here, I invite you to place two blocks. You might lean all the way towards the rear of your mat on their tallest height in front of your knees and with your feet separated, your hips distance apart, please come into a standing forward fold behind the blocks. Bending your knees as much as you need to release any unnecessary tension in the back of the body, especially the lower back. Place your hands on the blocks, maybe at the tallest height, and inhale, stretch your spine forward. Now step one foot at center and cross, let's step the left foot at center. Cross the right foot in front of the left foot over to the left side, so your cross-legged forward fold, and bend your right knee at least a little bit as you elongate your spine and hinge from your hips. Activate the belly here, especially if you've got any lower back tenderness only folding to the degree where you don't feel pain in the back of the body. Again, there might be discomfort. Notice the difference. 10 breaths. Notice where you're feeling your body respond here in this pose. Even though this posture may be targeted at opening up the calves and the hamstrings and the glutes, you might be feeling it elsewhere that your body is really needing that attention. So wherever that is, you might visualize breathing into that specific spot. Let your head hang loose. 
as you relax the jaw, relax the muscles all throughout your face, even relax your tongue. See if you can relax your scalp. Now again, with your hands on the blocks, inhale, lift the spine forward and switch the cross of your legs, bending the knee of the front leg, hinging from the hips slowly. Notice if the side needs a different range of folding in. I'm just honoring what is, breathing through to support your body mind. Letting go of any unnecessary added tension in the neck, the shoulders, the jaw. Using your blocks for your hands, uncross your legs. And let's step the feet a little wider than your hips distance apart. From both hip sockets, turn out both thighs so your knees are pointing out in the same degree that the middle toes underneath are pointing out. And then come into a version of a squat that suits your body right now. You could stack your blocks and sit on them. Uh, you could sit up on a chair and turn out the legs. You could come into more of a horse stance where the feet are wider uh, and then you're up high. The pelvis is really high. So what you can sustain for about 10 breaths. Now, if you're really low, your pelvis is hovering above the floor, you might splay your inner thighs apart with your arms and let your spine lengthen as vertically upright as possible. Roll the shoulders back and down. You might be able to join your hands in prayer, lift your sternum towards the thumbs. And then maybe visualize breathing into your pelvis, the groins, the inner and outer thighs and hips. Malasana, squat. This posture is also helpful for stimulating digestion. And then when you're ready, gently come all the way to the ground to sit or sit up on a folded blanket if bringing the legs in front of you causes the back to round any degree. Elevating your pelvis on a prop can help to uplift your spine and help you breathe more easily. Let's come into uh, stacking the right shin either on top or in front of the left shin so that you're either sitting cross-legged and if this right knee is lifting high you could put a block underneath it like this or if your hips are wheeling you're in double pigeon where you're stacking your ankles and your uh, knees while flexing your feet where you can't see the soles of your feet they're pressing out to the sides the flexing part helps to stabilize the knees then ground both of your sitting bones. You might move the flesh aside and really feel the bony parts of your glutes root down. And then draw the belly slightly in and lift up through the back of your skull. Let the shoulders relax, keep the throat open. And you might choose to stay upright or begin to hinge forward little by little for 10 breaths. As you're bowing forward, you could also opt to place a block or a tower of blocks underneath your forehead to rest down on or any configuration of your props get creative.
And as you press your pelvis downward, start to lift your chest. Breathe in, slowly rise all the way up. Stretch your legs out in front of you and maybe circle out your feet, especially if you've been flexing your feet quite a while. Notice your breathing. And then let's switch the cross of the shin that's forward or on top, either sitting in some form of cross-legged. Remember, you could put a block under the outer left thigh if needed, or stacking your ankles and your knees with your feet flexed in double pigeon pose. Root down to your sitting bones, lift up from the base of your spine to your crown, and let the shoulders relax. Either stay upright or begin to hinge forward, breath by breath. You might have props to catch your forehead or not. Ten breaths. Once again, rooting down to your hips, breathe in to rise from your chest slowly. Stretch the legs forward. You might circle out the feet or sit still and just take notice of anything that might feel slightly different internally. So now I invite you to find a comfortable way to sit for our last pranayama, which is going to help us tune inward, relax more deeply, and prepare for shavasana and meditation. So each of these different practices of yoga, from pranayama to asana to dharana, which is concentration, to dhyana, meditation, are all different angles in which we're entering that sort of flow state of completely immersing in the present moment. Remembering that the word yoga itself means union. It's the union of all aspects of our being, mind, body, spirit, breath, all in one place. And feeling the power and harmony of that. So let's do that as we concentrate on the breath. This breathing technique is called three-part breathing, Durga Pranayama. So sit tall and relaxed and imagine that your torso is a jar. We're going to imagine dividing that jar into three cross sections. So the bottom of the jar is your pelvic floor. And the first cross section is from there up to your belly button all the way around. Now the second or the middle cross section encompasses most of your rib cage all the way around. And the third or the top cross section includes your chest, shoulders, upper back, all the way to the top of your neck. So three-part breathing goes like this. We'll inhale one-third into the lowest cross-section, then pause. We'll inhale the second-third into the middle cross-section and pause. Then we'll inhale the last third all the way to the top of the neck. Hold the breath, relax the body, and then we'll exhale really slowly through the nose and hold the breath out. That's one cycle. Let's practice three cycles together and two cycles on your own. And as you're practicing Durga Pranayama, it might be helpful to place a hand on the highest cross section and the lowest cross section and to close your eyes, visualizing where you're breathing into. Remembering it goes all the way around, not just the front body. All right, let's prepare to start by emptying this breath into the first cross section. Inhale one third. Pause into the middle cross section, inhale. Pause into the top, inhale. Hold your breath and relax. To your nose, slowly exhale.
hold your breath and sit tall. Cycle two, inhale, lowest cross section, pause, inhale, middle, pause, inhale, top, hold it in, exhale slowly. Hold it out. Third cycle. Inhale, lowest cross section. Pause. Inhale, middle. Pause. Inhale, top. Hold it in. Relax. Exhale slowly. Hold it out. Continue two more cycles on your own. Taking your time when you finish, let go of controlling your breath. Sit for a few moments observing anything that you feel. And then slowly, please lower your body down to the floor where you can lie down comfortably for a few minutes of Shavasana, corpse pose. Place your body in a position in which you can relax everything and welcome stillness as well as presence. Eyes closed, breath natural, tuning in.
Letting your body rest here a little longer with eyes closed. Sense how your body feels right now. And be gentle with yourself as you slowly begin to move little by little into simple stretches. Keeping the eyes closed so that you're tuning inward. Gradually turn over onto your right side, resting your head. Pause there for a few moments to observe your breathing. Notice the quality of your natural breath now. And sense the way you feel energetically. As you're ready, press your hands into the earth and rise into a comfortable seat for a guided 10 minutes of meditation. I invite you to find a way to sit that allows you to comfortably be still while alert at the same time. A couple of gestures or mudras you might place your hands in to support your meditation. One that helps to tune deeper inward is called Gyan Mudra. And it's where you place your thumb and first finger to touch and flip the palms to face up on your lap. Another mudra that helps to cultivate evenness of mind, neutral mind, is to stack the palms face up on the center of your lap with thumb tips touching. Choose what works for you and then either close your eyes or steady a gentle downcast gaze in front of you. You'll hear, you'll hear the singing bell both at the beginning and at the end of our meditation. I invite you now to choose something to rest your awareness on that helps you to be present. If you're a more visual person, you might be resting a gentle gaze on one thing in front of you. If your eyes are closed and you're a more tactile person, you might be resting your attention on the feeling of the breath at a particular spot in your body, such as your belly. So choose an anchor, a focal point to help you come back to the present as often as your attention may wander. And for the next two minutes, practice bringing your attention back to that anchor as many times as you need with a very gentle, friendly manner. If the analogy of the ocean helps, you might imagine that your mind is like the ocean and the anchor helps you to drop deeper inward towards the bottom of the ocean where there is an inner stillness, a sense of serenity. As you go up towards the surface of the ocean, that's where the waves of fluctuating thoughts and attention to stimuli move our attention. If you come back to that anchor and just follow it all the way back down, 
pretty soon you might even let go of the anchor and just sink to the bottom of the ocean and find that resting in stillness. And if you find your awareness flowing up to the surface of the ocean again, where there's lots of waves pulling your attention in different directions, just notice that that's happened and be kind to yourself. There's your opportunity to choose to come back in again, dive deeper inward. As many times you may need to re-anchor and come back. As many times as you make the choice to come back, think of it as strengthening your capacity to be here now. It's a recommitment each time.
Sense the deeper layers, such as how you're feeling right now emotionally and mentally. Starting to bring closure to this practice, I invite you to acknowledge anything with gratitude. And then remind yourself of what your intention was for today's practice. Remember as well to whom you dedicated today's practice. And together, let's close chanting Om three times. Sense the vibration that you're both giving and receiving through sound. Aum. Aum. Recognize that all these tools that we're practicing in yoga already live within you. It's just a matter of using them so that they're accessible regularly. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.